Amen. Please be seated in the presence of God. It's good to be back. Great to see you all. Missed you all. And uh, I'm thankful to God. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there's no place like home. That's the truth. And um, sometimes I think when you have the opportunity to be away from your familiar environment, you get to appreciate what God has blessed you with. How many know what I'm talking about? And um, we were well looked after. We were well looked after, you know, when we were uh, in the States with Apostle Estrada. Uh, he, he, he looked after us well, very well. So no concerns or any, any uh, issues on that front. But we still missed home. We still missed home. I missed seeing your faces. I missed you know I, I i was late on whatsapp and i would see birthdays and things and i'm like oh yeah that's it you know and i'm like i'll get in touch and i never got around to getting in touch but of course charge it to my head because in my heart you're precious amen praise the lord jesus and so i'm grateful to god and uh, thankful for the opportunity he afforded us to refresh to reset and to be you know um released again into what he has and that he has brought us into a new month, the month of August. Amen. Aggression for alignment. How many are aggressive about alignment this month? Because it's a new, be it's a new beginning, then you have to do what? You have to make sure that you just get yourself in. Get yourself in there. Praise the Lord Jesus. I'm looking at my time and I am wondering what am I going to do? Because I have something on my heart that the Lord placed on my heart to share with you. But I'll do the best I can. I, I possibly might not finish, but wherever we get to, we get to. Second Samuel chapter 6 from verse 14. I'll just read verse 14. I was going to read from verse 14 to 22, but I'll read just verse 14. Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. I submit myself as your vessel, and I ask that the utterance of your spirit speaks through me. I thank you, O God, that you have taken over my faculties, my thinking, my intellect, and my intelligence. And that you will shape and sharpen your people by the reason of your word today. That your word will be a seed. Yes, planted deeply and grafted to bring salvation to our souls. To cause us to come up to a new place. To cause us, O oh God, to be released and deployed into your purpose. Even as it concerns your kingdom here on earth. We give you praise and we thank you in advance. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. That amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Just look at your neighbor, the person sitting next to you. Tell them, praise the label of. Come on. Look at the neighbor sitting next to you. Tell them, praise the label of. Okay. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me. That, that's what I want to talk to you about. Praise the label of. Come on. Find two more people. Just get up and just find two more people and say, the, the first person didn't hear me. Say, praise the label of. Praise the label of. <laughs> Glory to his name. I know it sounded, it sounded weird and you're thinking, what's he saying? What label? I will tell you. You will understand as we, go, as we go through it. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible reads in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6 from verse 14. I'll just read verse 14. It says, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. Clad in a linen ephod, a priest's undergarment. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Praise the Lord Jesus. When you look through the Bible, you always will see patterns. There are patterns in the Bible. And everything about us as Christians always will follow a biblical pattern, isn't it? Everything about your life, the foundation, the journey, the, the, the things that God has asked you to do, you always must find reference for it somewhere in the Bible. You always must find uh, reference for it in the Bible. And the Bible is replete with patterns. It shows us patterns. It, uh, the way God works actually is that God sets a pattern and then the people obey and then God blesses it with his presence. Is that true? 
Somebody say yes, if you know that's true. Is that not what happens in the Bible? And here we see a pattern that David said, because David originally had tried to bring the ark into Jerusalem. If you remember the story of Uzzah, when he touched the ark, for those of you who like to worship and say, this is how I like to worship. That's how Uzzah too likes to worship. And behold what happened to Uzzah. Amen. But I'll leave that alone. Amen. And uh, David tried to bring the ark to Jerusalem, and something happened, and God slew Uzzah, because uh, Uzzah was getting too familiar. He was getting too familiar. In 1 Kings 18, when Elijah was about to, you know, slay all those prophets of Baal, I, I, I could imagine what Elijah was thinking in his mind. And he was saying, you guys, I, I'm just about to kill you all. Because he told them, he said, maybe Baal is meditating. Maybe he's traveled. Maybe he's easing himself. <laughs> call on him. Call on him. Call on him. But for the understanding of patterns, and the priority of patterns. The Bible says, when he came to the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah said to the people, he said, come near to me. And the Bible said, he began to do what? He began to rebuild the altar. That's the pattern. He began to rebuild the altar. And that's why when God said to us that we should be aggressive about alignment this morning, it means that we have to get ourselves to the point where we realize that what comes first must come first. What comes first must come first. And because praise is the weapon of the believer. Praise is just beyond what we do with passionate music, with singing, with clapping, with dancing. Praise is way beyond that. Praise is the weapon of the believer. According to Genesis 49, actually, praise, personally, I call it the squeeze. It's the squeeze. It's the squeeze on the neck of the enemy because sometimes the enemy squeezes us. Anybody felt the squeeze here before? And then when he's squeezing you, do you know what you should do back? Squeeze him back. But how do you do it? Praise. Praise is the fight. And for praise to happen, I actually realize and bring the outcome that God has ordained for his people. It must be prioritized. It must be prioritized. Every time we're in church, not because I'm measuring your praise or because you are giving it to me. I'm always keen to know how many are praising him. How many have the habit of praising him? So Elijah said to the people, he said, come together. And then he began to lay the foundation of the altar. He rebuilt the altar. And then he set the sacrifice on top of it. They asked him to pour water plenty times. And the Bible says, when it was now time for the evening sacrifice, he lifted up his voice. He says, Lord, you know that I'm doing this because you asked me. You know I'm doing this because you asked me. And so that you can show yourself to these people. I'm paraphrasing what he said. He says, show that you are the true God in Israel today. And the Bible tells us that fire came down and licked up the sacrifice, licked up the water, and they gathered all the prophets of Baal. You all know the story and what happened. And God and Elijah slew them. He slew all of them. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so three things I want you to know about this, because David in this scripture, I don't know why I just got to that First Kings 18, but I hope he blessed you anyway. <laughs> it wasn't part of my notes. Amen. But David here in Second Samuel chapter 6, what we see here is that David prioritized the pattern for praise. When he missed it the first time, he, got to, he had to realize there's something that we missed from this. It's too quiet in here. Play something, please. <laughs> Play something, please. Amen. <laughs> it's too quiet. I want to be hearing something. Amen. Not that the sound is something, but you know, the sound is what tells you where you're going. Oh, God. When you're watching a movie, how did they tell you what's about to happen? Mm. You know, you see the thing on the screen by the sound that you're hearing. So imagine I'm in the movie now and I walk in here and there's danger about to come upon me. What's going to happen? You know that danger is lurking somewhere in the corner there. The moment I open the door and walk in the room, the music tells you something's about to happen. This is why believers should never be quiet because although the devil, the devil, you know, great and significant things have great sounds. Anybody lives near a rail station here before? In Golders Green, I was going to visit my sister when she was living in Golders Green many years ago. And when I go to visit her in Golders Green, Golders Green is a, is, is a place in London, she lived near a rail station. Whenever I'm at her place, 15 minutes before the train comes by, we know it's coming. 15 minutes before it, com it comes and passes the house, we know it's coming. How do we know? Because we start hearing the rattling. <laughs> something's about to happen this is what the devil wants to get you to he wants to get you quiet because when you're quiet the sound you make that shows that this is where your life is going to he clips it before you even make it sound is important sound is important praise the lord jesus how did i get here i don't know but david <laughs> 
But David, David now learned his lesson and he knew we have to do this right. We have to prioritize praise. God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. And David realized and said, despite the fact that he is everywhere, at the same time, he, you know, if you wrote in Psalm 139, I believe it was he wrote, he says, where can I run from your presence? Where? He says, if I take the wings of the morning, he says, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, he says, you are there. He says, you are everywhere. So anybody who's trying to run from God, you can't, you have no place to hide because he's everywhere. But that presence, omnipresent or the omnipresent God is not the one we seek when we come. We seek the manifest presence. The omnipresence of God, you, have to do, you don't have to do anything for it. It's already there. But the manifest presence is the one that praise brings close. It's the one that, sheds, that sends this joyful shout in the midst of God's people and lets the camp of the enemy know that their God is alive and well. That's what the, that, that's what, that's what the scriptures tell us. And so David understood and said, we have to do this right. We have to do this right. And so he understood that the Ark of the Covenant must be born on the shoulders of priests. And then he got the priests ready. He got everything ready. And then David began to show us an order and a pattern for praise. The Bible says every six steps he went, he made a sacrifice. He, made, he, gave, a, he, gave, a, he gave a praise. Amen. And, and he kept doing that. And by the time they got to the place where they were going to set the Ark down, what David did then, if you notice, if you're a student of the Bible, you will know that this was how the tabernacle of David overtook the tabernacle of Moses. Moses built a tabernacle in the book of Exodus 27, I believe it was, that God started dealing with him on those things. And uh, he had this tabernacle that God gave him the specs for. And said, this is how it should be. And uh, Moses built it that way. And for many years, the people worshipped that way. Even one of the things that will make you understand the difference between Saul and David. Because David as a man, he was a praiser to the core. Oh, I wish you heard me. David was, if you stripped every layer of David, what you find at the core, David is praiser. He's a worshipper. Let me tell you the difference. When Saul was king, the ark was in the land of the Philistines. But Saul never did anything about it. Saul fought the Philistines, won the Philistines, but never got the ark of the presence back. The presence meant nothing to Saul. But the moment David came, David said, I hear the ark is... Okay, at that time, I think the Philistines had returned it to some, some place. And then David said, wherever that ark is, we we'll have to go find it. And so I wondered, after the order of what God asked Moses for them to be doing in the wilderness, when the priests were worshipping, and there was a veil in the most holy place, there was no ark there. But priests were giving sacrifices in the time of Saul. They were giving sacrifices. This is what the Bible calls the people who are of this time. Second Timothy chapter 3 it says they have the form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. May God save us from religious Christianity. May revelation, may revelation invade your space so that religion goes. Because that's what, if you are not careful about being aligned, you will find yourself just going through motions. You do it because that's what we do. You say it because that's what we say. But the heart is not there. And then the keenness and the longing and the yearning to see the manifestation of the presence of God, it leaves you. And so David knew and said, we have to do this right. And so he prioritized praise. And when he prioritized praise, he now came and he brought it. And the Bible says, when he brought the ark to the place where it was meant to be, David began to dance and he danced with all his might. <laughs> and when the wife laughed at him and said, how is it that the king of Israel chose to just abase himself today and made himself look like a pauper in front of all those? I think she, she, she referenced little girls out there because I don't know for some reason why she thought that he was doing it to get attention of those little girls. Well, maybe the girls have already sung Saul has slain in his thousands and David in his tens of thousands and so maybe she thought that thing got into David's head but David is a praiser to the core David danced the label off oh God I wish I had people in this place today who are willing to praise the label off a label is a restrictive definition that has been placed on you either by yourself, your circumstances, or somebody else who does not believe that God will come through for you. Do I have help in this place? And I need people who understand that no matter what the label has been for this year, I can praise it off. 
I can shake it off. Oh God, was it during uh, uh, what, what were we praying about? And you you told us about Pastor about shaking it off, shaking it off, shaking it off. In the place of praise, we shake it off. So David was dancing. He told his wife, he says, "I danced with all my might because God took me and made me king in the place of your father." So the label they had on me, the one who his father forgot about, um, the one who wasn't called to the anointing party, the one who was not thought about when anybody thought of who was the mightiest and the strongest, um, the one who slew a lion and a bear and news was not there to carry. David said, all those labels, um, I'm praising them off now. I'm praising them off. Every label, I'm praising them off. And David danced with all his might and showed and said, the label that they have placed upon me, what they used to call me, I no longer am that. What they believed to be the case about me, that's not who I am. And I love the fact that as God is bringing us into an alignment that to every person here, you know that the doors will open by praise. The Bible says, enter he to his gates with what? With thanksgiving and to his courts with, with praise. Why? Why? Because you can't approach a king. If you go to Buckingham Palace now, say King Charles is there. You can't just walk in and just see him. You won't just walk in there and just say, hello Charles, I came to see you. No, he has to be in court. Even in the time of the tabernacle, there was the outer court, there was the inner court, and then there was the most holy place. Because there are levels, and how you access those levels in God is through praise. The priority, the understanding of the pattern of praise. Praise the Lord Jesus. And praise is our environment. When I taught you before, one time ago, I can remember that very well, that when God needs a thing, he doesn't speak to the thing, he speaks to what's holding it. When God wanted fish in the water, he spoke to the water. He didn't speak to anything and say, oh, let there be fish. No. When God wanted man, who did he speak to? So what does that tell you about your environment? Where is your environment? Oh, come on, talk to me in this place. Huh? Why are you so quiet this morning? Amen. Or this afternoon. Your environment is in God. Is in God. And because your environment is in God, we have to go beyond the religiosity around our choreographed music, the routines around it. I feel always for the choir. When they are trying to get you to clap, Sister Annie was telling you all, clap, 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 clap. And some of you were clapping, thinking, when are you going to sing the first verse? No! She was helping you sound the alarm for your deliverance. But you were stuck in the routine of Sunday service. May God have mercy on us. May God give us eyes to see. Because that was a call into your environment. Into your environment. If you go to the place where you have water around you and you get fish from there, the moment fish is out of his environment, even the strongest fish, if you watch these guys who, who do dangerous fishing and they catch the big ones and all that, the moment they reel them in and bring them on deck, the fish starts... Because it's out of his environment. It is out of his environment. Same fish, or say it's a croc. Maybe crocs are they are, they are, they are by environment, if I may use that term. <laughs> but same fish, say a shark. Same fish, throw it back in the water, jump in the water after it. It will tell you who's boss. It will tell you who's boss because it's in his environment. Praise is our environment. Somebody say praise is our environment. And so for praise to be able to take labels off you, the first thing you must do, you must hear the sound. Tell your neighbor, say, hear the sound. Come on, say, for praise to take labels off. Oh, I need help in this place. Please help me, help me. Play me something good, please. They are not helping me today. Say, for praise to take labels off. You must hear the sound. Look at somebody and say, do you hear the sound? Oh, find three people, tell them, do you hear the sound? I think in Livingston Assembly, I can hear the sound. In 1 Kings 18, 41, um, what's his name? Elijah said to the king, he said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because that sound is what begins to shake the realms of the heavenlies. That's what begins to make war. That's why I said praise is the squeeze. The moment you get to praising, you begin to operate in this biblical principle that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Of the tongue. And that's why you must learn to praise. 
even by yourself. And I worry about people who cannot praise here because if you show me you cannot praise here, I'm worried you might not be able to praise by yourself. Every time you need to praise, you might need to turn music on. You need to get you Dunsin or Nathaniel Bassi or one musician and turn their music on. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Please, don't get me wrong. But to be a praiser is beyond the routines of music and the technology that music affords us today. Amen. Amen. He'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to his name. To be a praiser means that you understand what it means in, I think it was Exodus 27. I love that scripture so much. And I think it represents something because what God was saying to Moses to tell the people was that he said, when they are coming to the tabernacle, tell them to get their own olives and squeeze their oil for their lamp. Because God wanted that if you're going to be a part of the worship, you have to not do it based on what the corporate structure provides. The responsibility for the lamp must not be on the church. The responsibility for the oil in your lamp must be on you. It must be on you. It must be on you. And that's why to be able to praise those labels off. I told you about classifications. I told you about the things that we have been defined by according to our race, according to our color, according to our postcode, according to our salaries, according to our tax code. There are classifications for every single person looking at me in this room now. But we can praise those labels off. We can, through praise, do what has never been done before. Oh, I wish somebody heard me in this place. I said, we can, through praise, win battles that nobody ever thought they were possible to be won. But first, you must hear the sound. Oh, come on. Somebody say, I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear. Oh, God, if you desire a change in this place, listen to me. Change the sound around you. If you desire the sound, a change in your life, change the sound around you it has worked for me times and times and times again you know when i was listening to testimonies i was so glad and grateful to god not that people have troubles but of course that we represent a a a, a, a people you know there, there are there are latte churches you know latte latte the, the coffee drink you know what everything's just so fine everything is perfect everything is just bam 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 you see, pastor, he's correct from head to toe. You see everybody else, everybody's just set. And you're wondering, man, do they get anything wrong in this church? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Nothing wrong with looking good. Nothing wrong with excellence. Nothing wrong with, you know, appearing at your best and all that. But what I'm saying was that when I was listening to testimonies, I could tell that there are saints who are making a progress in their daily living. That despite the classifications of the world, that despite the things and the labels the world wants to put upon us and say, this is who you are, that's how it's going to be for you and all that, people are making the effort to walk by faith and not by sight. And I was grateful to God for that. Praise the Lord Jesus. And it's the same thing too because I have seen it work even in my own life. Many times I've had to praise things away. And I'm not praising even sometimes when I do it and it's public here. I'm not praising because I'm having the best of time. Don't get it wrong. I'm not having the best of time. It's not because, you know, my sister said, and I said, oh, I wish you, you would just change that. Let me tell you something about praise. Baby praisers wait for the outcome, then they praise. Ah. Ah. Am I in the right church? Did I travel and somebody else took over this church? Baby praisers, they wait for the thing to come. So my sister was saying, I'm not trying to, 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 to smite you, but let, let me lend you some wisdom, please, if you don't mind. Don't wait for the message. The sound makes the breakthrough happen. When you stay silent, then it's possible that you could lose it except for God's mercy. But the sound you make, oh God, the Bible said when Bartimaeus even was told to keep quiet, the Bible said he yelled even the louder. Because at that time, God knew. Let, let me tell you something about the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit, there's a day God knows that is your day. You don't know that day. All you have to do is just be what? Be consistent. Be steadfast. Be present. Be available. Keep speaking. Keep walking. Keep praising. When that day comes, God will be the one who announced it. He told Abraham, he said, I'll give you a child. 
24 years went by, nothing happened. A year before he came, he said, by this time next year. Why? Because Abraham kept the perfect work for 24 years. For 24 years, Abraham kept working. God knew this guy is expecting something. And that's how we act. Baby praisers, they wait to see the outcome. And they say, ha! I'll join the testimony line. I'm sorry, Sister Lavide. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay? You are not a baby praiser. We bind it today. <laughs> Amen. But mature praisers initiate the outcome with praise. They initiate the outcome. They don't wait. They say, I'm going to praise this label off. And so when you see me praising and I'm dancing and all that, it's not because things are working well for me and you think, oh, pastor has it all together. That's why you think, no, 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 be not deceived. Amen. It's because we have come to understand some things that some things do not move except you fire the shots of praise at them. Praise is the weapon. Praise is the fight. Actually, the, white, the, the fight you fight with your skill as a marketer, as an IT consultant, as a businesswoman, as whatever, the fight you fight with that is not the fight you're meant to fight. The fight is with praise. When you settle it with praise, when you come outside, the devil knows who's boss. The devil knows who's boss. So you must hear the sound. Praise the Lord Jesus. Um, and sound makes a world of difference. I was giving you the example of what happens in movies. In movies, they make you know what's going what's to happen because they know that you will know that something's about to happen by the sound you hear. In Acts chapter 2, what happened on the day of Pentecost, the Bible said first that there was what? There was a sound. There was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind sound always great things great equipment they release sound when you see a plane all these big planes that will carry people of different weight sizes can you imagine when i i don't know about you i traveled recently so when i look at the plane i'm like okay so all of us with our weight combined will enter this tube it will go in the air and travel at 550 miles per hour as we're joining i was looking at the screen it was saying speed ground speed 550 miles per hour. I couldn't even compute it in my brain. So this is how fast this thing is going. The force it has. But why do you see the airport workers around the plane block their ears? Because of the sound that comes from it. And demons ought to be walking around your house with their ears blocked. They ought to be coming near your children with their ears blocked. They ought to be coming around your circumstances and say, let's block our ears because this one, we know that a song will never stop coming from his house. And so the first thing they go for is what? They go to steal the voice from you. They let you create an atmosphere of silence. And some churches now even like it. They say, oh, the Lord is his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. And so they come to church. If you shout on the way, they look at you like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? At a conference we were in, in America, I've not said this to anybody, not to soul, not even my wife, but we were at the conference, the first night of the conference, a guy was preaching, and the guy was preaching up fire. He was preaching up a storm. He was preaching up a storm. And at some point, he began to talk about how that, you know, we can run laps. You can run laps around the building. We do that sometimes here in this building. So it's something we are used to. So it wasn't a strange thing to me. And so he began to preach. And the more he preached, people started running laps around the building. Get up and they run. Ooh. And Brother Godwin was sitting next to me. Kingdom Life Church, Brother Godwin, our, our own Brother Godwin. And he says, Pastor, let's go for it. And so he ran. I said, No, 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 don't worry, you go for it. Immediately he left the Holy Spirit told me, said, You should have done that. And I said, Okay. But just to show you in human nature, I said, Okay. But they ran laps that night. I did nothing. I did nothing. Do you know what I kept saying? I said, I'm new here. I don't want to draw attention to myself. I don't want to start thinking, who is this guy? What's his own? Because I can be crazy. You and I can be crazy. <laughs> so it wasn't about anything. But I was just being dignified. Oh, dignity has robbed some people. It has robbed and it has just continued stitching the label on the more. And so, the night continued and that guy finished preaching. I ran no lap. Even my father and the Lord came up and said, I still sense that people should run more laps around here. That if you're watching, I'm one of them. <laughs> and said, I sense people should run laps here. Your pastor did not run. True story. Then we went back to our hotel. We slept. The next morning, I woke up. 
Do you remember when we had a prayer here and I came with moon boots? The first cave of Adulam that we had. The next morning, I woke up in the hotel room. Early in the morning, I wanted to go and use the toilet. I got up, I put my feet on the ground. I couldn't walk. Now, before you say, ah, God punished him. No. no. <laughs> There's a difference between affliction and attack. Okay? I, I, I don't have time. I'll have explained it to you. So, God wasn't punishing me. No, 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 no. Affliction, or let me just explain, just briefly. Affliction is scheduled by God. It is to prove your character. Attack. Sometimes, attack can coincide with affliction. So, the devil knows that, okay, this has been scheduled. He now uses it as a weapon and says, let, let me use this and silence him. Attack is to kill, steal, destroy. You understand? And so, you always have to work with the wisdom and make sure that you have your academic hat on. No matter what you go through to understand affliction and attack. And most times, what happens most times is that we focus more on the attack and forget the affliction because the affliction is meant to prove your character. In the time of affliction, your greatest weapon is your character. Preach to Victor. They are not, they are not hearing, so I preach to Victor. I know you all think I have it together. <laughs> But I'm preaching to myself. And so that morning I got up and I couldn't place my feet on the floor. Brothers and sisters, I tell you no lie in Christ Jesus. I crawled from my bed to the bathroom to use the bathroom. And then I crawled to the kitchen where we had our stuff in the apartment. I said, where's our pain reliever? Where did we keep painkillers? And all my wife was saying, what are you looking for? I said, I need. I said, this leg must be sorted though. And all that. And the reason I said that was because see what I was thinking. Oh God. You just was God have mercy on us. See what I was thinking now. I wasn't thinking to be free from the affliction of the pain in my leg. I was thinking more of the fact that the night before, while we were at conference, dad had said, he said, oh, that's Pastor Victor from Scotland. You will hear from him during the conference. And I thought to myself, no, he didn't say to me about saying anything or maybe coming out to come and say anything. So I was thinking, what does he mean by that? So I told myself, ah, please be prepared. Though. Maybe he might call you to come and say something. So I said, he can't call me to come and say something and I'll be limping. <laughs> so can you see what I was thinking? Please help me here. Help me here. Help me. Can you see what I was thinking? Is that a righteous way to think about it? So I was saying, uh, we, have to, we have to cure this leg so that I don't limp. <laughs> I go. <laughs> I cared more about my image. I cared more about my image. That's why many of us have labels. And that's why praise has a hard time getting through to get those labels off. And then I realized as I was reaching, reaching for the painkiller to swallow it and all that, I said, no, I think the first thing I should do is let me break bread. So I repented of my sin. I said, Lord, help me. And I took communion. We didn't even have communion. It was just juice and some, some uh, type of biscuit stuff that they, held, they left, left for us there. And I took that. I broke bread early that morning and I prayed over my leg and I took holy communion. And then I went back to bed. And then we got to church. That evening, a second person was preaching. And as he was preaching, he said, maybe we should do laps here. Guess who went out first? <laughs> it wasn't the same guy preaching. But as he just said, maybe we should do laps here. I said, wow! <laughs> and I went for As I was running, my leg was spinning me. I said, no, I didn't say this. I'm saying it just here now. I didn't say it to anybody. <laughs> and I ran. Each time they were running, I ran. I ran. And as I was running, the leg was spinning me. I was running, it was paining me. I said, no devil, you can't get me now. I think I know better now. I hear the sound for somebody in this place. Uh, I said, I hear the sound for somebody in this place. Uh, sound goes before a manifestation. Um, and if there's anybody here who needs a manifestation, this is your opportunity to raise a sound of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the way we do it. That's the way we do it. And to raise the sound, once you hear a sound, my time is nearly up. I think I might stop here. The next thing you must do is that to praise the level of, you must be a student of foolish things. Look at somebody that say foolish things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says, How God, it says, brethren, it says, consider your calling. For not many are noble. I was saying it earlier. You know, people think sometimes that, see, I'm not a perfect man. Okay? I'm not a perfect man. I'm a redeemed man. 
I'm a redeemed man. I want to be redeemed man, not RCCG man. Please don't don't, don't get it twisted. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> What I mean, I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Okay? Uh-huh. I didn't have to make that clear. Before you think, okay, ah, he's, he's so RCCG. No, RCCG would take you to heaven. Okay? Uh, yeah, I know. Yes, I might get sacked for it, but it doesn't matter. It's the truth. It's the truth, okay? And I know that even my seniors understand that too. We do not preach church. We preach Christ. And that's why the motto of this ministry is Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever amen and so in first corinthians 1 26 for us to be students of foolish things when it comes to praising labels of and hearing the sound of the abundance that god has for us we we have to understand that is the foolishness of praise that makes it and you know that's why during praise sessions is the time to be to be foolish when the bible says enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise he means with unrestrained celebration how many of you used to club I never went to a club, not once in my life, so I can't raise my hand. But how many of you used to club? Or you still club? (laughs) Hallelujah. I like the way church just, everyone just looks straight. Nobody even tries to look at their neighbor to say, they are talking to you. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. Never been to a club in my life, but I have seen what the show clubs can be like in, in, in things you see on TV and all that. Why is it that it gets to a certain time in the club with the music and the sound and the way they set the lights and all that, people begin to do stupid things? What do you think has taken over them? There's a spirit behind it, isn't it? There's a spirit behind it. That means music as a language for the soul, it has the way it does what? There's a way it calls on the emotion and draws from it draws from it that's why we permit music in church praise the lord jesus some churches will tell you music is bad drums are bad keyboards are bad because they feel that they will make us become like the world but guess what that's what the world is using to take our children away from us and so if we should do it if there's any place where we should do it better is it even in church is even in church. We should do it better in church so that we can whip the devil because once music enters, when sound becomes part of the thing, the first thing God made, I've told you before, is sound. The first thing God made, according to the book of Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2, after the first verse, in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. The Bible says the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. What was he doing? He was brooding. He was making a sound. He was preparing himself like Romans 8 said. It says we have this groaning within us. We too we long for the adoption. We long for the consummation of our adoption of the, of the body. The groaning. And then God spoke. God spoke. God spoke. God spoke. Speaking is a sound. God made a sound. God made a sound. And when it comes to praise, you must understand it because that's where we need, we need the aid of music. We need the aid of music. You know, as I explained this, I say, You are my hiding place. You've always filled my heart with songs of deliverance whenever I am afraid I will trust in you. Oh, come on, sing it. You know it. I will trust in you. Whoa. I declare. Oh, let the weak say. Sorry, my Christ and mercy days. In the strength. In the strength of the Lord. Whoa. I will trust in you. Hey, I will trust in you. Oh, let the weak say, I am strong in the strength of the Lord. So, in our culture, some of you went pla- you, you went places now, isn't it? But let me bring you back. Just listen to me for a moment. But just this, you went places. Why? Because this guy knows what he's doing. 
He knows what he's doing. When David instituted the tabernacle of David, you know what David did? In the tabernacle of Moses, they had musicians, but they played during services. David came and said, no, I think we are missing something here. They will play 247. Because David understood the power of a sound. That even if a guy is plowing his ox and he's just walking by the tabernacle and he hears the sound coming there, he says, yes, my soul says yes. Oh God, <laughs> my soul says yes. Amen. Because there's a sound that must be resident in you. And for that sound to remain in you, you must be a student of foolish things. And so many times we like the sound quiet like this, but play me something that is quite upbeat. Let's sing something that is upbeat, you know. Something like... Um, what are those songs that we sing that, you know? Uh, uh, somebody help me out right here now. I'm trying to live with. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, one our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Hey, sing hallelujah to our God. Hallelujah! Every praise, every praise is to our God. One more time, every praise. Ow! Every word of worship. Uh -huh. I see you, somebody. Come on. Every praise is to our God. As loud as you can sing hallelujah, hallelujah. to our God. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. is to our God. God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. You are all students of foolish things because with the sound of you are my hiding place, you were just waving your hands. But immediately the sound changed to upbeat. What did you know? You knew I had to abandon my dignity now. I have to get up on my seat. Somebody ran to the drums. Somebody picked up a microphone. Somebody stood up there and started clapping because they know that God can use even insignificant things like me clapping my hands, like me singing, like me shouting. Him, like me turning around him. he can whip the devil with that hell every praise to our God come on let's whip him tonight every praise every praise is to our God somebody put your hands together come on hallelujah
Nasa, the sticky situation in your relationships, in your family, in your marriage, in your body. It's time to praise the labor. Hallelujah. I'm stopping here. I didn't even get into this, but I'm stopping here. I'm stopping here, but I, I sense the Lord wants me to show you something. Can we have that scripture on the screen? 1 Corinthians 1 26. And apologies, we haven't got screens on the stage yet. We're working on it. But if you can look at that screen at the back for me, please. Hallelujah. I want you to see something. Why you should never play with moments of praise. If you can't see it, please open it in your Bible, please. If it's, if it's a challenge, guys, don't worry. We will, we will go to the scripture. But let me show you this and then we will close. Glory to his name. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship, you will be exalted, O oh God, and your kingdom. kingdom shall pass away, O oh, is the kingdom, thine is the power. Everybody lift it up and say, Thine alone, Thine alone, Thine alone. Oh, 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 oh. is the glory forever. Say it as loud as you can say, Yours is the kingdom. Not about how I feel, but yours. Yours is the kingdom. Not about what I want, but your will. Your will be done on earth. I see it is in heaven. Yeah, I say yours. Be the glory. Yeah. Yes, sir. You can go on stage if you want to. You can go on stage if you want to. Yeah. Yours is the kingdom, sir. chapter 1 verse 26 the Bible says this excuse me it says for you see your calling brethren that not many wise not many wise remember I'm teaching you on what being a student of foolish things that not many wise according to the flesh not many mighty not many noble somebody might be in this room somebody might be online and be wondering what's with this noise they are making why are they all over the place because in the realm of the flesh it looks undignified it looks like you're drawing attention to yourself it looks like you're trying to just enjoy yourself and have a good time and don't get me wrong i know that there are times where people do that but we still must not fail to praise by becoming expressive and allowing our whole bodies become a vehicle of God's own praise he says according to the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called but God has chosen the word chosen there means God has had picked God had picked himself he said the despised yes I'll have it and then Victor Francis wakes up in the morning and looks at his credit report and says what can happen with, with this God says the despised yes I'll have it yes I have it and then Victor Francis wakes up in the morning and says oh I haven't got a job I haven't got a job and God says oh unemployed yes I have it I have it he says God God look at your Bible look at your Bible he says but God has oh God where's my, where's my oh God help me help me help me thank you thank you I moved my scripture <laughs> that devil is a liar 
Amen. Yes, he says, uh, he says, but God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Somebody say one, one. So one to one, isn't it? Weak things of the world to put to shame things which are okay. And then uh, verse 28, he says what? And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. Are you seeing? Now say with me, three to one. Do you see the progression? This is why insignificant foolish things matter in the presence of God. You may think that you're just making a noise. You may think that you're just doing something. The Bible says things that are not. The first thing that is not is what you cannot see. Some of you cannot see yourself out of debt. Some of you cannot see yourself out of that situation. Some of you cannot see the way it will happen that God will turn your circumstance around. But if you get foolish and undignified in his presence, he can choose three and answer one. And answer one. The Bible says, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised, number two, says God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are and what are the things that are now the evil report the condition in your body the situation in your marriage the questions in your mind the things that are poking you and and just nudging at you from every direction and saying what about this yes i know you said god can do this but what about that you said god can choose even uh, my running laps in this building i don't know why i'm saying laps again my running laps in this building god can use it even to answer my situation my situation oh come on somebody lift your hands in this place up if you want to run this is your time now to do it up if you want to be a student of foolish things up do something stupid do something foolish up. do something that seems like it's insignificant up. and you wonder how can i pay my bills up, with just these things up. but i know that god is doing them something in this place up. something in this place up. there's a shaking there's a noise up. There's a coming together. There's a revival. There's a standing. There's a revelation. Somebody shout to the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes